really glad to be here. Broken is an interesting topic for me, uh, and I know that maybe there's a perception I'm just going to talk about all the things that break at the opera, but um, <laughs> I don't want to keep you here all day. <laughs> so so uh, what I thought I'd do really is talk about what more my perception of broken is. And you know, in this day and age, uh, I think that the term broken um, means to throw it away. Uh, I think that uh, in our society, we have so many things with us that uh, when they break down, it's like, you know, phone's dead, see ya. Car's not working, get a new one. Relationship's not working, done. <laughs> and so uh, this is the quote that I sort of attached myself to. People would rather replace than work on fixing things. And it kind of breaks my heart a little bit because I like fixing things. And um, I was kind of pondering why I like to fix things so much. Uh, it might be back to my father. Uh, my father was an engineer in Los Alamos. And I remember that uh, he liked making things and fixing things. And he made my mother a very large shadow box frame. It was a beautiful oak frame, all these little shelves on it. And he made that for her Hummel collection. I don't know how many of you know about Hummels. <laughs> But, uh, you know, my, my mother had this amazing collection of Hummels, these little uh, German hand-painted figurines. And uh, can you hear me okay? Because I, I might just skip the mic if that's, but throw something at me if. Uh. So anyway, my mother had this great collection of Hummels. My dad created this um, nice display space for it, place of honor in the dining room behind her chair. Um, and as a curious three-year-old, I loved looking up at those guys, right? They're, you know, they're all little kids, and they're all doing different things. Um, this one happens to be the wanderer heading out uh, for a hike, but there's some celebrating birthdays and petting dogs and kissing each other and all that stuff. So one day, one Saturday morning, I got up early, and my dad was making pancakes in the kitchen, and I thought, you know, I, I got to get a better look. So I pushed my mother's chair up against the wall, or not quite against the wall, it turns out, climbed up in the back of it. And when I got up there, I lost my balance. The chair tipped into the wall. I grabbed that giant frame and pulled the whole thing down on top of me. Now, regardless what happened to me, the things were smashed. And my father could have, he could have gotten the dustbin and put them all out in the, in the waste basket. But instead, what he did is he very carefully picked up all the pieces, and he laid them in a tray, and he got out his Duco cement, and he very carefully put all those things back together again. He did the best he could to fix them. And for years, those were hanging out on different shelves in our house. Um, and you know, they never looked the same. They were not the same. But they were there. I never realized how beautiful having a broken Hummel in the house could be. Because to me, it was that Saturday morning where I destroyed my mother's Hummel collection. But 50 years later, one of these guys was um, still hanging out in my mother's house. And I said, boy, you know, I, I can't believe you had these broken Hummels for this long. And why would you hang on to them after all that? And she says, well, you know, your father sent money to his brother stationed in Germany to get those Hummels for me. And they came back, and he built this beautiful rack for them because he knew how much I loved Hummels. And so when I look at those, I think about everything he did to uh, get those to me. Well, what an amazing story. Here's something broken on the shelf, and the story comes back 50 years later about that relationship and how much these things mean to her. So it made me think about <clears throat> This, uh, in the Japanese culture, is actually an art form where when a vessel breaks, like a, a bowl or a cup that's been in the family for maybe generations, who knows, that some craftsman has put together, and it breaks, and instead of throwing it away, they fill the cracks with lacquer, and they accentuate those cracks, and they celebrate the history that that vessel had in the family. And they cherish it even more because it was broken, and it's been put back into use, and it's still part of the family. That's a pretty great thing. 
Now we get to my world. The show must go on. Uh, this is actually a mug that's on my desk. Uh, I, I've only had it for a couple of years, believe it or not. You'd think I'd have this forever. But um, this, it, this really is sort of the, the quintessential phrase that all theater people carry with them. You know, no matter what happens, keep it moving. And the Santa Fe Opera you know, is an outdoor space. It has all kinds of issues and problems uh, with weather, um, occasional coyotes, maybe a bear or two. Um, we've had a skunk under the set. But we always try and keep things going, right? We always try and keep it going. And so um, when things break, I have this amazing staff that is prepared to fix it and prepared to keep it running, to keep it going. An example, uh, in 2007, we did a simulcast of La Boheme to the Fort Marcy ballpark. Uh, it was the second simulcast we did, and it was, so it was a live broadcast of the show. Uh, we were presenting it at Fort Marcy, and we presented it down in uh, Albuquerque at a park down there. Um, it takes a lot of work to do this. Uh, we had a company come in from um, Texas. They brought cameramen to uh, practice doing the show. They brought in all this equipment you see here, sound towers and a, a you know, 20 by 30 foot screen, rear, uh, rear projection screen projectors to throw onto that screen. We had satellite hookups and you, know, you name it, we had it. So we got to the ballpark at about 6 in the morning to set all this stuff up. Beautiful day got it all ready, and at about 6 o'clock in the evening, we had one of those microburst storms that just came through like a freight train. Uh, high winds, you know, I bet the winds were easily 50, 60 miles an hour. Torrential rains, lightning like crazy, and the screen came down. So you can see right there at home plate, that nice big screen <laughs> laying in the mud. Well, the, the guys who put all this up, all the technicians, the company from Texas, uh, looked at me and they said, you know, um, we're done. There's no way to do this. We're, we're packing up our gear and we're going home. So um, there's a funny guy over there in a yellow raincoat and a red ball cap uh, on a cell phone. That's me. <laughs> and I'm calling back to the shop to tell them what had happened. And my amazing team, you know, they're, they're at the end of their day. My carpenters, you know, they're literally driving out the gate. And they all turned around, they came back to work. They threw all this lumber in the trucks. They grabbed ladders, they grabbed rope, they grabbed weight, you know, ballast to help. You know, anything that they could think of, they threw it and they came in an army of about five pickup trucks. Showed up on the field and we set to work on putting up the screen. Now, when that rain had hit, the audience had already started to arrive, and they all, you know, they fled, <laughs> rightly so. Um, so they were starting to trickle back in. It's getting to be 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. The show starts at 8.30, and we're still putting the screen up. And more and more people came to help. More and more people from my staff showed up to see how they could lend a hand. And pretty soon, firefighters from next door, you know, that fire station there, they showed up and they brought their hoses to get the mud off the screen and they brought more ladders that, that could reach higher. It was amazing. And you know what? We fixed it. And uh, probably not quite 2,000 people that were remaining who, who <laughs> braved the wet grass and the mud. Uh, but you know what? We got it up five minutes before the show started. Um, it was still broken but it looked fantastic. And the celebration that occurred was amazing. And the teamwork that going, you know, broken can mean teamwork. You can have something that's broken, you can rally a family, you can rally an office, you can rally a shop, you can rally an audience to participate in making that broken thing be better and be okay and be a success. So that was really an amazing moment. And we have lots and lots and lots of those kinds of moments. This is the quote, though, that I thought about afterwards with the, with the guys who came from Texas um, because they really were kind of bewildered. 
you know, if, if something you're doing or thinking isn't fixing or improving a situation that is wasting your time. Those guys were less than helpful. <laughs> this was not my staff. They were amazing. They, they totally got on board. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think this is a rut, myself. Uh, I think this is a real rut that we fall into. It's really easy to look at our situation and say, you know what? This is working okay. Everything must be fine. It keeps you from uh, introspection. It keeps you from looking inside and seeing if things really are working as well as they could. Uh, it makes me a little crazy. Um, theater people are very curious people. We walk down the aisle of uh, Home Depot and we look at things and say, boy, I bet I could use that for this. I wonder if I could try that piece of hardware over here. Maybe that paint will help seal this better. We're, we're just constantly curious. And I think that's part of what fixing broken things is about, is being curious as to the condition that they're in and trying to make sure that it's working as good as you think it is. I also like this guy. Maybe it's not always about trying to fix something that's broken. Maybe it's about starting over and creating something better. But looking at that situation and really assessing it. Again, that could be uh, a policy, uh, a place, a workplace. That could be um, a working relationship, whatever. You know, it's time to step back and look at those things and find out that, yes, all these things are working really great. These things are broken and we need to fix them so we can reach our maximum potential. We did that recently, well actually recently, I think recently is over the last 18 years. Um, when I came back to the opera, I was asked to put together a maintenance list. Uh, there wasn't really a comprehensive long-term maintenance list of taking care of our properties and they're, they're pretty extensive. Um, we have 166 acres out there, we have our own wastewater treatment plant, our own wells, we have lots of rehearsal halls and outbuildings to take care of, administrative offices, shops. So I set about, with my staff, working on a list, uh, a, ma a maintenance list. You know, this building needs stucco, this one needs paint, this one could maybe have a window fixed. And, you know, that's a pretty important list. But the further I got into it, the further I realized that, is this really a maintenance list? or is this fixing things? Fixing things is completely different. Fixing things is evaluating how they're working and finding out what's broken and putting it into service in a better condition. So in doing that, we discovered a lot of things. For instance, um, our stage time is precious time in the summer. And there's a few people here, uh, look at Alex has worked <laughs> out there with us. Um, you know, it's intense, and the stage is in use for something 24 hours a day, seven days a week, now all the way through August. So any time that anybody gets up there is very precious, whether you're uh, working on the painting of the show or the lighting of the show, or when the cast is on stage rehearsing a show, every minute counts. Well, what we noticed is that our rehearsal halls were not the same size as the stage. They were smaller. And that meant that every time a show moved from the rehearsal hall to the stage, time was lost re-blocking the show, getting everybody to re-space and find out what the sight lines really were, what their connections were with the other cast members. So we could maintain those halls or we could fix them and, and make them better. Um, when we dug deeper into the theater, we were looking at things like um, our gift shop where the storage of the merchandise was in four separate locations around the campus. Well, there's a lot of inefficiency in that. You lose track of merchandise, you can't find it, you've got to schlep it from point A to point B. It's just, it's just not a very good way of working. So we had a nice gift shop, but was it the best gift shop we could have? Our AV department, their equipment was stored in five different locations. They had two different workspaces to work out of. Again, we could, you know, buy new equipment for the space, but really, maybe we need a, a bigger space. So in 20, well, so my repair list turned into a very long capital, <laughs> capital maintenance list. 
And that list got to be about 20 years long based on our, our budgeting. So you can imagine it's a little daunting to, to pull that list out and try and align what we could do within our budgets. In 2012, uh, Charles McKay and I were backstage during a uh, performance of Pearl Fishers. And we were always, you know, during shows, we talk about a lot of things. We talk about future seasons. Uh, we talk about the weather, whether we're going to get rained on that night, all of those things. This particular night, we had been talking about capital projects. And we got back into the wings, stage right, just off stage, and it's full of scenery, and it's full of chorus, and it's full of crew members. And Charles looked at me and said, you know, this is something we need to fix. Wouldn't it be nice to make our wing space better? Make it bigger? This, this is really a problem for how we operate in the company. And that was a tipping point. And suddenly, we were looking at all these broken spaces, and if we fixed the wing space, even though we wanted to fix the dressing rooms, we were going to end up breaking the dressing rooms more because we had to move an elevator into those dressing rooms. And then if we were going to fix those dressing rooms, it was going to impact the wardrobe space, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why I go back to that quote, sometimes you've got to break things to make them better. Um, and we were going to end up breaking a lot of things. So we finally grouped all those things together. And over the last couple of years, we've been literally gutting and tearing down and removing. But we've also been in that process investigating every single aspect of how we work and what could make it better. Um, we never had a paint shop before. We never had a place to paint scenery. It's hard to believe. Now we have this paint shop uh, where we can set up, we can set up a full set in this space and paint it. We can lay out work and it can stay there for days and days and days uh, while they work on it and we don't have to pick it up in order to do a show. It's, it's amazing. Um, they need a good light in there. So, we, you know, we just made the shopping list of we need a paint space, how can we create the best paint space we have? And then we went on from there to places like our prop shop. And that was a pretty congested, pretty cramped space. So in assessing the damage that was going to happen, we also looked at the things that we could put back. And now we have a space that is ventilated, well lit. It's plumbed with compressed air. It's got the power it needs. It's got laundry facilities. All of those things came back into it when we fixed the problem. This is the carpentry shop you know, in the prop shop. What we realized is we never had a carpentry shop for the props people before. They always ate up 30% of the space in the scene shop. So we could fix that. We could give them their own space. And that's not only helping the prop guys, it's also fixing a serious problem for the scene shop because they would gather more space. So now this is the new scene shop that we've put together. Again, this is a space now that we can set up a full set inside of. That's a big problem we just solved. That was a big, broken piece of our pie. We could never assemble a show indoors in the scene shop while we're building it in the winter. We'd have to take it out to the stage. Ventilation, dust collection, all the safety uh, things that we have. So now we've gone through a, this two-year process, well, really four-year process of investigating all these spaces, understanding all the broken parts, tearing it all apart, putting it all back together. We still have a scene shop. It's better. We still have a prop shop. It's better. We still have a costume shop. It's better. We've income, you know, we increased the capacity of restrooms for the people who are coming to see shows. We've put in more bars for, for the same folks. So it's really a, a holistic approach to not looking at just the thing that was broken, but all the things that were broken and putting them back together in a way that made sense. Again, utilizing the staff and all the people who use that space to put the pieces back together again, build Humpty Dumpty back up to where it is. Now, in this case, unlike those Hummels, you're not going to see the cracks. It's not going to sit on the shelf. It's an active space. It's beautiful. And you know what's funny is in five years, the people who are working there won't even remember what it used to look like because it's such a transient 
population of people who work there. But it's really great to know that a company like the opera and a staff like the opera staff could have the forethought and the uh, energy and the dynamic and the um, desire to take this all apart and put it back together uh, in, the, in the proper way. So I urge you to take up the challenge of broken. I urge you to be brave about uh, looking at what's broken on your table, whatever that is, and accept the things that you can't maybe quite put back together, but celebrate those things as well, because they're a part of you, they're a part of your art, they're a part of your business. Those cracks, those chinks that you can keep working through, they're part of your process, and they're part of what makes you who you are and what you are. Thank you.